I'm a diamond, not a piece of glass Break my heart, you can kiss my ass Walk away like I never knew ya Got a new man, what to do ya Good morning, my Nefertitis, and hello to my kings out there. I'm your host, Rena May. Welcome to another great episode of Nefertiti Girls Living in the Ethnic Modern World. So you already know what our hashtag is, and we're going to say it out loud today so we can remember it and we can embed it in our heads because we are hashtag minority women representing timeless beauty. All right, so... Um, now we are back with, uh, season two, episode two of the Black Hamptons. It is going down in the Hamptons. Okay. It is just getting started and it's trouble in paradise. That's the name. So Sergeant Lane gets a visit from Bobby the Boyd and the top boxing promoter. Sydney confronts Vanessa and Anthony and Michael are warned about doing business with that. You know who? Alexander Cora. All right. So in this episode, we already had the continuation after the whole auction mess uh, for the charity and Malcolm and Martin buying that painting for uh, uh, a half a million dollars. Well, a million dollars at that. Not a half, but a million. Okay. So, Caroline and her lover, Christopher, he is a lawyer. Like I said, his law firm is known for being nitty gritty and they will do whatever it takes to uh, keep a client happy and to win a case. So, like I said previously in episode one of season two, she actually hands him over a file. And like I said, they are having a love affair. So, this is now day three and she is kissing him on the back. Balcony, um, as she's overlooking the beaches in the Hamptons and she's telling her boy toy it's time to get back to work baby we don't play we don't kiss we don't have fun we don't did what grown people do it was fun like she said with your fine ass <laughs> So, um, now while she's on the balcony enjoying, um, her lover, Christopher, Mr. Johnson, AKA Anthony, the tech guy for the cell phone, he is on the beach having a meltdown, a serious meltdown. He is throwing the cell phones that are defected. I mean, he probably got about 60 or 70 out there on the beach that he don't tore up, stomped, all types of stuff. Now, his wife, Sydney, she in the house looking at him through the uh, sliding glass door like, what is going on with him? Should I approach that or should I give him his space? Because we already know what's going on, but he's going a little bit too far. All right, so his best friend and business partner, Michael Devon, he actually comes over and he actually tells uh, Anthony who uh, um, Alexander Core is and what he's capable of doing. Now, Anthony, he lived a very sheltered life. Uh, he don't know nothing about the streets. So, um, you know, his friend Michael Devon, he, he's, you know, a little bit of the streets and he had family that is currently still in the streets in the black market. So, um, he's saying the streetsman telling him that, you know, um, Alexander Court is no man to play with. He do not take bad news lightly and he shoot first and ask questions later. And you know how that is with Alexander Court. So, um, now they, they back and forth trying to decide, um, how they're going to tell, uh, Alexander Core because like I said, Anthony the do, do gooder, he wants to tell, um, um, Alexander Core that it's a, a, a defaulty with over a hundred thousand phones and that's, you know, time, money, production replacements, and they still have to run a test to see why the chips were faulty. So it's just a number of things, um, you know, so he want to tell him and, um, Michael Devon's like, no, this, you're, you're not telling him. Um, matter of fact, let me go ahead and do some more lead work and I will catch you on a note, but he's telling him, you got to stay calm, cool and collective because at this point we do not have any more room for error and the next move we make could, could potentially cost us our life. Now it is, it is like really, really, woo, it's getting heated out here in these streets. Now, um, Leslie 
um, she finally met up with uh, Aries Core. Um, they walked, they looked at a house together. Um, you know, uh, she still had to, you know, um, uh, finagle around um the new realtor that was coming in showing her properties um to a new um resident of the black hamptons now the new person that's moving in and buying up all the available property is a very rich businessman and he is caucasian now leslie she uh let the you know caucasian realtor know that um this is the reason why it is called black hamptons she's like okay um i don't care none about that my client don't care all he see is green so she was basically trying to get the realtor to run down the, you know, dot your I's, dot your T's, that did you do this, did you do that? Because you don't know how we move around and do things for the Black Hamptons. She was like, I don't need to know that because you know what I'm saying? My client, he um he owns the titling company. So when you own the titling company, it's some stuff that you don't have to deal with because you know what I'm saying, that money and that pool outweighs everything. So now uh, Leslie, she got to run back and tell her auntie Carolyn. And I'm telling you, when Carolyn find out about this, she ain't going to be too happy because, um, you know, she has to, uh, still re, uh, remain her, uh, gorilla PIMP ways. Um, to the uh, people in the Black Hamptons, because like I said, that Brit family, they the bank owners, they run the island, and, and she's that sh she's the puppet master. Okay, now um, it's just so much stuff that has transpired with um trouble in paradise. You know, um, Peter he finds out. Um, that his dad actually seen, um, the promoter and the heavyweight champion of the world, aka, uh, Karen, uh, aka Black China, his girlfriend. Um, so, you know, he's pretty much upset with his dad and he's going to have to figure out how can he get his dad to actually, um, you know, go ahead and let him pursue his dream because he's telling him, OK, the dream you have is not the dream I have. What if I'm doing all this work for the, the, um, the Olympics and I'm training for the Olympics and I let this opportunity pass and I'm, I'm about to sign a six figure deal guarantee cash money right now now and i can I, I i can take that door and get this six figure or i can keep training and living under your thumb trying to be a good son and obey you because he do appreciate the time and efforts that he did put into him as kind of being a single father now this the uh the series haven't unraveled yet for me to know what's up with peter lane mother and you know uh uh sergeant lane baby mama or a uh, wife or you know whatever uh relationship he had with that person to create peter now um his father was very hurt uh that he had to realize and see that he is not a little boy no more he's a grown man he's 23 years old so um now you know everything that he has worked so hard for and had that tunnel vision for for years putting all his blood sweat and tears and his his child it you know for your child to turn around and turn the tables and say you know i don't need you and it wasn't a bad i don't need you it was just a wake-up call for him to really put his foot down and take control over his life as a grown man trying to establish himself in the world especially dealing in the black Hamptons, okay because you know a cop salary and a sergeant salary don't pay that much so you are middle class living with the upper 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 class while um he's parking uh he has a valet job and he's parking his enemy car that stole his girlfriend how low do you want his manhood to like really go sergeant lane you got to question yourself as a parent because if you parent your kids good enough, you know that your instructions and the imprint that you left on them, they shall carry it on without you overshadowing them. And oh, and well, how could they say micromanaging them? He's micromanaging his life and it's, it's really horrible right now. Now, Corinne, 
she comes over um her in-laws house anthony and her sister sydney house the johnson family um sydney comes downstairs after she's seeing her husband um having a meltdown um karen um she's sitting there and she was like oh i didn't know you was here and she was telling her like you should change the passcode to the door because she still can get it she still can get in she asked her she was like is everything okay because she thought that she'll be with bobby uh the heavyweight champion of the world she said sis she fine but it was entirely too much money entirely too much cash and jewelry and stuff ain't hey, just too many valuable items just laying around she didn't want to be accused i feel you uh karen i feel you black china aka angela white i see you turning over on that new leaf boo <laughs> it's showing it's definitely showing i'm so happy for you um i'm so happy for you angela i really am because you have made a big transition a uh, transition if you could really see how your face and your body look from the first season of the black hamptons until now when you were at that art gala uh charity auction girl you ate that continue to eat and continue to prosper my sister all right now um we're gonna get into um after leslie was so heated she didn't even um give uh, uh um aries cora a second chance okay she was like eh, i gotta I, I can't entertain you i have to figure out what's going on with the hamptons because my aunt she's gonna kill me if i don't get this under control and find out and bring it back to her now um what you call it now malcolm he winds up sleeping with the painter um you know he wants to keep things casual she was growing feelings um towards him um but that's what happens sister girl when you give it up on the first date it wasn't even a date he bought your painting and you for seventy five thousand dollars at the auction so moving on now christopher he uh reaches out to one of his old fraternity brothers which happens to be a judge um in the black hamptons um he gave him the incriminating evidence that carolyn gave him um for him to hold moses so his uh so his conviction wouldn't be overturned and his release date will be pushed out for the next 30 days now along uh them having their frat meet and you know they're catching up like they said brothers for life they clicked their glass they drinking that yak they did pass that brown envelope and it was stuff now christopher 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 baby boy baby boy you so fine okay but christopher christopher sit up here and um he was like i need another favor and he was like well what other favor do you need bro um, because my uncle, he, he, he's, he's, uh, a one. He's not about to do anything illegal. He's not about to take no, uh, uh, takeoffs. He's not about to pay no, uh, take backs. No, uh, none of that. So, um, back ends, he's not about to do none of that. He's, he, he's, he's official tissue. And he was like, nah, he was like, um, I don't need, I don't need, um, but I do need, um, to go on a vacation to Bali and Bali and he was like I heard that Bali has horrible uh um cell service uh so he was like well how long do you need the vacation to be and he was like about three or four weeks he was like he can see if he can work on that okay so Carolyn she pulling out all her strings right now okay so after him um uh, uh, Christopher and his frat brother which I'm gonna get his name for you guys um his frat brother um they actually tie up their business meeting um christopher actually shoots over to the britain family household which is carolyn um now like i said kimberly 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 now like i said kimberly is the family assistant okay when i said that you was gonna find out today who she is and i'm about to tell you okay now y'all holding on to y'all seats okay now we about to go on for this roller coaster ride all right so um kimberly opens the door to christopher 
and Christopher, uh, he politely flirt with her. Uh, like I said, Kimberly is a very beautiful girl. Um, you know, she uh, has a nice body. And like I said, she's very intelligent. After they flirt or whatever the case may be, um, she asked him why, she, why is he here? He was like, he wanted to talk to Carolyn. And she said that Carolyn told her that she didn't want to be bothered for the rest of the day. And he laughed and he was like, well, I'm quite sure she would want to see me. So she was like, well, just wait here one moment. So she go back and she tell Carolyn, Carolyn looks like all surprised or whatever the case may be. Now, as she's being surprised, she actually do let Christopher come back because, you know, like I said, she it, they are lovers. Now, uh, Kimberly is her assistant and the family assistant, like I said. So she's uh, is Carolyn, Christopher and Kimberly in the office as Kimberly has her back turned against the bookcase in Carolyn's office. She actually slides her cell phone, which is an iPhone, on the show and press record so she could record the conversation. Now, when I seen that, I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know, Kimberly, she gathering information. Like, she, you know, she, she coming right for the queen. Okay, so she must be down with the king knight. She must be down with something because she's collecting information. So, after Carolyn... And um, Christopher discuss what they got going on in the office. Um, you know, he told her that it's done. He got another three or four weeks and she's all ecstatic. And she did G check him and she was like, next time you come, you better call. Because like I said, they are lovers and she's trying to keep it, you know what I'm saying? Business, but pleasurable. And I can respect that. So they give themselves a little kiss. They walk out. As they walking out um, into the house, because, you know, Carolyn is walking him to the door. Um, and Carolyn and Anthony, um, not Anthony, but Christopher go outside. Uh, Kimberly walked back to uh, Carolyn's office. And when she walked back to Carolyn's office, she get that iPhone. She get that iPhone off the shelf and she walks out. Now, meanwhile, she already have the Apple iPad in her hand, like hugging it, um, like tight towards her uh, inner stomach. Now the iPhone pad has a camera. I believe she was recording um, on the the uh, iPad from the very beginning when he first came to the door because she had the iPad the whole entire time. Now she was very strategic and very smart when she actually came. Um, you know, uh, came in there with that, that phone to record. That was excellent on her behalf. Excellent. I, okay. Now, uh, like I said, Jeffrey, the lawyer, which is married to uh, Leslie, the realtor, uh, Carolyn's niece. Um, like I said, he's trying to get Moses out of jail. So he's currently, he did leave the auction in the first uh, episode. So he's currently at uh, the prison right now. Um, he's having a client um, attorney privilege moment. They're talking. Um, Moses is saying this got Carolyn written all over it. He know it's Carolyn holding him up in the jail. Jeffrey is out. He's just, uh, he's outraged that uh Moses think that Carolyn will keep him in uh in jail and he was like why would she do that to her husband like what would why I don't understand so Moses break it down and he was like this is why she has me in jail she has control over generations of money and and power and secrets and dead bodies. She have leverage that she can use towards him. Now, the power and leverage that he held and he in the time that he ran before he went to jail for the charges, we still don't know what the charges are. I'm going to let you guys know when that gets revealed. Um, while he's in jail, um, she wants that. You, you talking about a black family that owns a bank. Now, we got to get into it because at one time, we as black people had black Wall Street. 
And we had our own banks and businesses and things like that. So this right here, the Black Hamptons, is a spinoff of an old tale. And that's a tale that we all need to each one teach one with our children because this is real. This is reality. He's, they're giving us a taste of what society is and how they think and what they move and how money is the root to all evil because it controls everything. Okay, so um, the security guard, um, well, he's not even a security guard, but the deputy or whatever in, in the prison, he uh, bum rushes into uh, the room, the holding cell. Um, you know, uh, Jeffrey gets up and he was like, what are you doing? This is a breach of uh, attorney-client privilege. You know you're supposed to not first. He didn't care because he's been getting payoffs from um, Moses and Jeffrey and whoever else um, since he's been um, residing there. Um, so Moses was like, uh, he was like, how much, uh, he was like, well, $500 due for another 30 minutes. And he was like, yeah. So he told Jeffrey to pay him. Jeffrey paid him. They sit down. Um, he said, by the way, you have another visitor. So when he said, by the way, you have another visitor, he was like, is that Carolyn? And he was like, no, Carolyn wouldn't be caught dead, uh, seen here. Like he know it's not her, but he uh, brings out his secret weapon before she entered the door. Uh, Jeffrey asked him, he was like, is there any, is there anybody on the outside, any strings, any connections that you can get so we can actually uh, get you out of here before those 30 days? Lord behold, Kimberly, the assistant, she come waltzing in. Moses' eyes and face lit up. Jeffrey was so confused. Like, he asked her, what is she doing there? And she was like, um, I'm trying to help just like you get my father out. And Moses sit there and he sit there and he smiled. He, that was the, the tightest, most proudest chest out moment. Like, yeah, Carolyn didn't know I had this secret weapon. She thought she knew me. But I outplayed her. And see, this is where this is where Carolyn got it twisted. The whole time Carolyn thought she was playing chess, she was playing checkers. Because now Moses got that ass on checkmate. <laughs> Okay, so getting back to uh, Sydney and Vanessa. So while Sydney and her sister Corinne were talking, her husband Anthony phone rang, and it was uh, Vanessa sending a text from reminding them of their business date and the time and where to meet. So uh, Sydney, um, she saw the phone. She didn't want to tell her sister. Her sister was like, oh, we should have beat her up at the auction when she was being a little bit too friendly uh, with uh, her sister husband, Anthony. And um, Anthony never told his wife, Sydney, um, that Vanessa was another silent business partner that went in with his tech, uh, his tech company. So he has uh, Bobby uh, Devon, his best friend, uh, Jessica uh, Britton, uh, Vanessa Britton, I'm sorry. And he has the, the infamous Alexandra Core from Core Enterprise. So, um... You know, like I said before, in season uh, season two, episode one, she met with the sisterhoods on the beach, and they were giving her the four one one on Vanessa. She let all that gossip go to her head. She uh, never told Anthony about the text, and she uh, wind up meeting Vanessa at uh, the restaurant. Now, Vanessa, she's sitting there. She's making sure the wine and the cheese and all that stuff is all good together. And she's just waiting on Anthony. Um, uh, uh, Sydney, his wife approached Vanessa and she was like, um, um, she was like, are you looking for me? And she was like, no, I was had a meeting with your husband. And she was like, well, um, for now on, I'm your um, point of contact for a uh, Sydney uh, technical company. Um, the you know, company that they have together, her, her husband. So, um, 
Vanessa, she tried to explain to her that her and her husband, uh, Anthony, uh, came together on common grounds after she came clean about Carolyn sending her to do dirty work to try to get the Johnson's family discombobulated over that property. Okay. Sydney wasn't trying to hear it. She was like, I'm the type of woman, um, that'll be the sister, you know what, uh, to protect her husband and her, uh, livelihood and her cheer, uh, her kid's family. Vanessa was telling her it wasn't like that. So Sydney had to be ghetto and cause a scene. She didn't like that because they did not want to end up on the, uh, Hamptons post page five, four or six page four or six is bad for the Hampton post newspaper. That's where all the juicy gossip and the do's and don'ts go at. Okay. So she was trying to tell her to calm down. She was like, no, this is not, um, this is not angry. Um, this is actual calm. She was basically trying to scare her. And Vanessa was like, okay, you got that one. Um, so Sydney, she, uh, gets up and she leaves. She storms out the restaurant. Vanessa, she makes a call. She calls someone and she told them, okay. She said, I need you. I need you to come do an assignment and keep somebody occupied for me. And she said, make sure you bring a bag of knives, AKA a bag of tricks because she got something for her. Vanessa said out her mouth. She said, okay, I wasn't trying to bring trouble to you, but now I'm about to bring trouble to your doorstep i told you vanessa is uh poison ivory she is nobody to mess with and sydney just don't know she don't sign the cat she don't sign a check that that ass can't cash okay Meanwhile, while Sydney was handling Vanessa, Anthony and his business partner, Michael Devant, went to the inner city of L.A. to visit one of his cousins that's still a part of the black market and underground world. They call him uh, Low Jack. He had a scene uh, with the family business where uh, he actually went to school with Sasha, uh, which is... Um, Tammy Roman, the uh, uh, the role that she played. Um, so basically, he was saying he didn't want to touch base on um, anything with Alexander Cross. He was like, "Cause I got money invested, and um, my business partner too. We need to know what what we up against. We family." He basically told him that you better not do anything to make this man mad because he's ruthless and he don't care how he handle his business. If it's not going well or you make him mad, people end up dead or missing, and they were shocked okay so anthony he's sitting up in this deja vu trance talking about is this really real michael's telling him yes sir it's really real we need to get it together and find a solution on how to get these phones working this is the end of uh season um two episode two trouble in paradise the black hamptons all right you guys it's been fun it's been good now you already know what our motto is and it is hashtag representing minority women in our timeless beauty all right it's been another great episode of nefertiti girls living in the ethnic modern world i'm your host rena may we about to be out and one more thing because we always close with this if nobody told you they love you today just remember god loves you each and every day Audi. make sure you like comment and subscribe <laughs>